My name is Jimmy Gruninger from West Virginia, by way of Michigan, by way of Europa, Starfleet, Chief Petty Officer, been in for over 20 years, currently Chief Custodian here aboard the USS Knoxville. I enlisted when I was 18. I've worked custodial crews pretty much ever since, mostly on starships. A while back, I did get posted to Starbase 83, which I hated every second of and requested a transfer after six months because it was planet side and, I mean, I signed on with Starfleet. You know what I'm saying? If I wanted to work on a planet, I'd have stayed on Earth and joined the Navy. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. I'd have never joined the Navy. Those poor bastards, most people don't even know they still exist. <laughs> no disrespect. If any of y'all know someone in the Navy. You do? <laughs> Who's that? Your mom. How long she been missing? <laughs> I'm only messing with you. <laughs> She's not really missing, is she? I love this job. At this point in my career, I really have nothing to complain about. I basically get to be as hands-on or hands-off as I want. Everybody always jokes about, you know, oh, who cleans the holodecks, but the truth is most of that is automated anyway. All we really need to do is change the filters every so often. And if the XO is breaking in a new batch of junior officers, most of the time we don't even have to do that. Oh, hold on. Better close this down. I like coming up here on my brakes. You can't beat the view, but you're not supposed to have the door up while we're at warp. One of the officers catches me and I'll never hear the end of it. The rules exist to keep us all safe and they apply to everyone as if I didn't know that. If there's anyone on board a starship who don't ever need to hear the safety lecture, it's the custodians, you know what I mean? We see it all. When someone tries to beam back to the ship through an ion storm and all that arrives on the transporter pad is a pile of wet hamburger and hair, guess who has to clean it up? Well, not me. I get one of the kids to do it, but you get the point. Worst mess I ever had to clean up personally? That would be about 15, no, 14 years ago. I was on the USS Endeavor, which ordinarily I don't really care where they post me, as long as it's not somewhere planet side, like I mentioned, because the job's the same everywhere you are. But serving on a ship like the Endeavor, not everybody gets to do that. So that was kind of cool for me. I've got a little model of it on my desk back in my office, the Endeavor. All the ships I've served on, that's the only one I've got. Anyway, 14 years ago, I'm on the Endeavor. I've been there a few months. We get called down to the starboard nacelle tube. A couple of crewmen from the exobiology department had been on a landing party to collect plants from this planet we visited, and apparently while they were down there, they got exposed to some substance, chemical, whatever it was. They weren't thinking straight, and they got it into their heads that they were in love and that they were about to be transferred to different ships and they'd never be together. So the state they were in, they decided the only thing to do was kill themselves, which they did by going down to the starboard nacelle tube, holding hands, and jumping into the plasma stream. Normally, they would have been vaporized instantly, but as luck would have it, those two went down to the nacelle tube while engineering was running the warp engine through a maintenance cycle, so the plasma stream wasn't at full strength, and instead of vaporizing them, it just sort of pureed them into a pink slush and then flung them out in all directions. Didn't make any difference to them. The stream was still hot enough that they were dead pretty much the instant they hit it. They didn't suffer or anything. But I guess my detail drew the short straw that day because when we got to that nacelle tube, there was creamed crewmen on the walls, the floor, the ceiling, all over the computer consoles and the instruments. It was indescribable. It was the worst, most disgusting mess I've ever had to clean up. It was the filthiest thing I had seen since that time I took a tour of the cleanest ship in the Navy. <laughs> no, but... I say things like that sometimes just to take the edge off, you know? As good as this job's been to me and as much as I love it, things do get pretty grim sometimes. All that chunky salsa splashed on the wall, that used to be a person. Two people. And even when there's not such a gruesome scene left behind, it can get... While I was on the Endeavor, we lost one of our senior medical officers. 
The ship had been boarded by a group of Felnadixian separatists who wanted to assassinate the Viceroy of Ankinostia, who we were transporting to a diplomatic conference somewhere. They somehow managed to beam in through our shields and ambushed the Viceroy in the corridor, but his private security detail was with him and they only winged him. The separatists ran off. Security, including most of the Viceroy's people, chased after them. Medical team shows up in the corridor to treat the Viceroy's wound, and while they're working on him, one of the separatists comes back around the corner, fires his disruptor. The doctor jumps in front of the Viceroy and takes the hit, and gone. Just like that. She wanted a burial in space, but she'd been vaporized. So when they had her funeral and launched her torpedo, there was nothing in the case except an air filter. <laughs> because that's all of her we could recover. Dr. Alicia Valdez, that was her name. No, wait, it was Dr. Tina Russell. Alicia Valdez was the xenoanthropologist who died of Klingon chlamydia. I helped clean up after that one too, oof. Klingon chlamydia and human chlamydia, they are not the same. Teague to Chief Groninger. Yes, sir. We had a containment field failure in Science Lab 3. Can we get someone down here to clean it up? Right away. Okay, thank you. Just one more second. Grunninger to Burleson. Yes, sir. Clean up in Science Lab 3. Standard kit should be fine. Yes, sir. Oh, hey. Yes, sir. After you're done, can you stop by the galley and ask whoever's on duty to make me an egg sandwich? Yes, sir. Thank you. Rank has its privileges. Well, let me see what I can show you. Here are a few tools of the trade. This is a type one molecular scrubber. That's good for phaser burns. And here's a type two, also good for phaser burns. These are oxidizing nanocrystals. Very good for removing stains from carpeting if you get there in time. And this is what Crewman Burleson is using to clean up that spill in Science Lab 3. Or at least that's what he should be using. Burleson's one of my new kids, still learning the ropes. He's a lot of fun though. Easy to prank, incredibly gullible, super nice. Well, he's from Utah. This one here is my favorite. This is a plumbing phaser disintegrates soft organic matter, good for unclogging toilets. And it doesn't just work on feces, it's great for hair clogs too. I found that out when I was serving on the Perseus. The captain had this thing about always being on the bridge, even when she wasn't scheduled to be on duty. So she would shower in the private head in the ready room. And this one time she got exposed to some kind of weird radiation that made her hair fall out, but it would only happen like one part of her body at a time. So the hair on top of her head falls out, shower gets clogged, I get called in with the plumbing phaser. Next day, all the hair on her chest falls out, shower drain gets clogged again, back I come with the plumbing phaser, and it goes on all week like this. Armpit hair one day, pubes the next, then all the hair on her legs. I never got called to the bridge so many times my whole career. Captains are odd ducks though. I figured that much out. And that includes the captain of the Knoxville. He got promoted to this command about six months after I got here, and practically the first thing he does is have a fully functional galley installed on deck eight, like a restaurant quality kitchen, which might sound neat at first, kind of quirky, kind of quaint, you know, but day to day that place is a maintenance nightmare. There's always something that leaked or got stained or got burned, and it's open to everyone on board, but the captain's the only one who ever uses it. Everyone else uses the replicators. There's a cooking staff who works full shifts every week and usually only cook three meals a day. Maybe a little more if the captain wants a snack. And that's why sometimes I'll ask him to make me something just for the hell of it. To give him something to do. It's not like they need to practice. They know their stuff. Especially Joanne. She makes one hell of an egg sandwich. I don't know what all she does to it, but there ain't no replicating that. I don't want to make it sound too easy. The job does have its challenges. We're out here in deep space. Weird shit happens. I told you about those two crewmen on the Endeavor who got it into their heads to kill themselves by jumping into the plasma stream in the nacelle tube. 
I've got an old buddy I've known since basic training, and he was on the custodial crew of the uh, the Ulysses, maybe. I forget, doesn't matter. One of the Galaxy-class ships. And they had someone who killed himself the same way by jumping into the plasma stream. Only when he did it, it was running full blast, and he was vaporized. Why did he kill himself? I think he just heard that his son was getting married to someone in the Navy. <laughs> I'm getting to why he killed himself. It turns out, back when that ship was being built, someone on the work crew with telepathic abilities had caught his girlfriend cheating on him, so he killed the girlfriend and her lover, chucked their bodies into the plasma stream to get rid of them, then jumped in himself. But when he was vaporized, it somehow left a psychic echo in the walls of the nacelle tube, and it turned out the crewman who killed himself while my friend was posted there all those years later had been driven to it by that. So, I've been at this a long time, but I don't know which one of these to use to get the psychic echo of a murder-suicide out of a wall. Maybe that one. So, I always forget how other people see my job, you know? I'm always surprised when I meet someone and tell them what I do and they ask me to explain the appeal of it because to me it's obvious. It has its ups and downs like any other job. Sometimes it's gross, sometimes it's upsetting. But it doesn't require a high level of training. There's skill involved, but it's mostly stuff you learn on the job and get better at with experience. There's not a lot of math. And it's a humble job, but it's also an important one. And I take a lot of professional pride in my work. I say to these kids who work for me all the time, you know, the officers like to tell people these ships clean themselves, but they only say that because we're so good at what we do. And what the officers don't know won't hurt them. Usually, I mean. If Lieutenant Valdez had known that Klingon had chlamydia, she'd probably still be alive. Hey, there's young Mr. Burleson. Thank you. Best egg sandwich in Starfleet. Who was working, was it Joanne? Oh, really, Miguel? Did he make it how I like? What'd you get? Weren't you hungry? Well, go back and get him to make you something. So take a break. I'm saying it's okay. Go get him to make you something to eat and take a break. I'll call you if I need you. Don't thank me. Thank Miguel if he remembers to season the damn thing. You're welcome. Oh, Jesus. How do you not season eggs? Better. Fucking Miguel.